Hi, I'm Kevin Ramsey and welcome back to Sweet Home Gardening YYJ. It's day 50 of a drought. This is the beginning of August. We also had a heat dome or heat wave in June with temperatures about 40 to 45 degrees for five days. Despite all this heat, despite all this drought, my garden is growing really well. So today I'm going to show you what's happening in my garden and then we'll end the episode by talking about composting and how to turn your garden waste into black gold. Welcome to the greenhouse. Now, as you can see, it's quite a hub of activity in here. These are tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes that I started indoors in February, as opposed to these, which are cherry tomatoes, which came up wild. So you can see quite a difference in stock health and plant size from what I started indoors. This has been the real game changer for me this year. You can buy IVs and drip systems at uh, health stores or gardening stores. So this has saved hours out of my watering time. All I do is fill up the jugs, move the IVs to where they need to drip. It's a better way to water the plants. You can slow down the water rate and it absorbs the nutrients from the soil more. And these plants don't like to get their leaves wet anyway. So it is the best way to water them. So I've got tomatoes here, tomato there, bunch of pe different peppers here, habanero peppers here and tomatillos. It's a rockin' greenhouse. Okay, here I recently pulled my garlic and my garlic is drying and curing. And what I planted in its place is winter broccoli. So your winter crop you plant in August, September, and it'll mature in the winter and you can eat it in the winter or early spring. So these are all broccoli, they're my own seeds. I plant about five seeds at a time just because slugs are gonna eat some and birds are gonna eat some. And now, now I've got too many and I wanna thin it out, but I don't want to disrupt the ones that I'm saving. So I've got my scissors. I'm just gonna go through, take away all the ones I don't need. I just need one every foot. Pick something healthy and straight, leave it, get all the other ones. Now, we can eat these, that's broccoli and microgreens. So I'll just throw that in our next salad and then I'll finish thinning those off camera. So here I've got the three sisters. The three sisters represent an, a native indigenous way of farming that dates way back in time. So what they would do is they would plant corn, green beans and pumpkin together. And there's a fourth sister, which is a sunflower, but I haven't done it. So what I've done is I've done eight corn in a circle Around each stalk of corn, when they got to a foot tall, I planted four green beans. And then I let that grow for a week and then I planted pumpkins all around them. So the green beans give nitrogen to the corn and to the pumpkin. The pumpkin provides shade and weed control. They're all beneficial to each other. When the natives did it, they did uh, a four foot chunk and then a four foot space, four foot space, but I don't have that space. So I have one clump of the three sisters here and then a little bit of extra corn. So here I pulled the carrots that I planted in February. They're beautiful, they're in the fridge. And I immediately start planting my winter crop of carrots. Uh, I have to keep the sprinkler on twice a day. Anytime you have fresh seeds in the garden, you need to keep them moist, especially carrots. Carrots need to be kept moist for weeks before they germinate. And here I'm starting to cultivate my Napa cabbage. And here are my green beans, which I planted a couple of weeks apart. So they're coming on strong. We're gonna to have to process them later. When you're picking your green beans, if you come across something like this, it's too big to be pleasant to eat anymore. So just leave it on there, let it die on the plant and there's your seeds for next year. So here's all my first year asparagus that I was talking about in an earlier episode. That is the asparagus I was supposed to be eating. I forgot, I got too busy in the garden. So I, when you don't pull up the stalks, all of a sudden you end up with a plant. And me being a novice asparagus gardener, I didn't want to cut it back down and hurt it. So I'll eat it next year. Okay, these potatoes are ready. They're gorgeous. They're really delicious. I made a chicken mushroom potato stroganoff last night, but I'll leave them in the ground until I'm ready to eat them. There's no harm to them being here. You can leave them here right until the winter. Just keep them there. They're staying nice and fresh. So here we are at my squash patch. Now, this is a tomatillo. I didn't plant it. And it's growing way better than anything in my greenhouse. 
it's not in the direct sun. The difference is all my squash boxes are filled with about 90% of my own compost. So this thing is just growing gangbusters. Now as for my squash, they're growing well, but as happens every year, they got powdery mildew on their leaves. So I've done a hard prune, taken away all the infected leaves um, and promoting new leaf growth. And what I left behind, I spray every week with uh, a solution of eight parts water and one part milk. And the milk helps keep that mildew down. So it's a problem every year. I fight it every year, I'm trying some new things this year. We'll see if I'm successful. Mm. So here we are at my second carrot patch. I've already harvested everything I planted in February and I've got a new crop in there. I've heard that chives make carrots taste better, so I've actually put two chive plants in there and we'll see. I can do a taste test, those ones versus this one, see which tastes the best. I've got a little hole in my protection thanks to my cat, so I'm going to have to fix that so the flies don't find my carrots. And behind me you can see I've got a really good netting around the blueberries this year. I've got a bumper crop, haven't lost a single one to a bird. And I did a much better job protecting my currants this year. They're all frozen and ready to be made into a jelly. Yum. Okay, and here we are at my salad garden. Everybody should have a salad garden. Plant one, plant something every two weeks, plant new lettuce. So after the big scorch in June, I didn't wait. I knew everything I had here was gonna bolt and go to seed. So I just pulled it, planted it again. This has been planted since the first week of July and it's ready to eat. Okay, you've seen how my garden grows. Now let's talk composting. In addition to getting a lot of produce from our garden, we get a lot of waste this time of year. Number one, buy a good pair of these. Everything that goes into your compost should be cut up probably into inches. This will accelerate the breakdown, makes it easier for you to turn it over with a shovel. Even woody stuff will break down. This is a scorched raspberry cane. Looks like wood, but it'll break down. Most important, break it down. So not everything can go in the compost. You need to think of seeds. So this is calendula. It's a beautiful flower. It attracts butterflies, which you might like to eat aphids. But it's no use to me in my compost. It's just going to mean I have hundreds of them growing where I don't want them. Cut off the seeds, this part can go into the compost. I don't need any more seeds in my compost, trust me. Welcome to my kitchen. This is our inside compost bucket. So all of our vegetable matter goes here into the bucket and then down to the pile. Absolutely no cooked meats, no cooked vegetables or anything with a sauce or salt on it. If you just steam the vegetables and don't eat them, they can go in here and down into the compost. This is a great way to reduce on the waste that's going to the city compost and you get to capture those nutrients for your own garden. The key to a good compost is turning it over often, airing it out and not letting the fruit flies get established. This will also keep it from getting smelly. This is the most physically demanding thing I routinely do in my garden. As my friend Dave says, depending on how often you turn it, you can have a compost that breaks down in five weeks or two years. I try to keep my pile three feet high and three feet wide. I cover it with a tarp to keep the heat in and moisture out, but I leave the bottom section uncovered to make it less attractive to rats. Now, because of my background as a respiratory therapist, I'm going to ask you to consider wearing a mask when you flip your compost. There's a lot of bacteria in here. Sometimes there's mushrooms and spores flying out of there. And God forbid you get a rat in there. Rat poop and your lungs do not mix. It's a really bad combination. You can die from it. So please wear a mask when you're flipping your compost. I know I'm not doing it in the time-lapse video, but I do do it. I used it today when I mowed my lawn, my dust bowl of a lawn. <laughs> Protect your lungs. We're all much more aware of it. We've all got these things lying around. Wear a mask. Now that I scared you about getting some rat-infested lung disease, go start a compost. Happy gardening. <laughs>